This is our lab test talk about the new Arri Alexa 35. Is this the new dynamic range king of cameras? Cinity, your digital cinema tech resource, supported by B and H and CVP. Welcome everybody to this Cinity lab test video with our lab test engineer Gunther. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks, Nino. So first time we do a video for a lab test, and the reason is. We finally, finally, finally received a loaner, unfortunately it's just a loaner, of the new Alexa 35 from Ari, which is an extremely promising camera. Correct. Tell us why. Well, basically the expectation is high. You know, in the past lab tests, the Ari Alexa cameras always sort of set the benchmark for dynamic range and latitude. And now Ari is coming with this new camera that promises even more stops in the highlights and more stops in the shadows. So I was super excited to get my hands on this camera and test it, run it through the paces in our lab. Uh, we have to say that, I mean, we've mentioned this many times before, but many manufacturers claim a lot of stops. Great. And I think the only one that was close to what they said in our results was Ari in the past. So they were yes. actually very close to what was claimed, which is not the case for many of the others, I would say. That's right. And Ari was always quite conservative in their uh, claims of dynamic range. And so, for instance, they rated the Alexa Mini LF at 14 plus stops. And that's what we got with the signal to noise ratio of one. Uh, so when Ari said that this camera has even more stops, I was like, how can that possibly be? Because quite honestly, if you look at consumer cameras and also recent cine cameras that we tested, uh, we always hit that sort of 12 to 13 stop benchmark and only Ari managed to push it with their past cameras already like one to two stops higher than all the others. And now they're coming again with something which is even pushing the bar higher. And they are saying it's 17 stops. Yes. But let's talk about what we test. We test dynamic range, we test latitude mm -hmm. and we test rolling shutter. Correct. Let's start with rolling shutter. How were the results? Yeah, rolling shutter, uh, the Alexa 35 is very good. Uh, I've tested first the 4.6K 3x2 open gate mode. And here I got an astonishing 7.9 milliseconds, which is really good. Uh, and then if you switch the camera to 4K, you can go up to 120 frames per second. And here I still got 7.6 milliseconds. I was expecting a bit of a lower value. It's almost close to the open gate value, but fine, 7.6 milliseconds is a very, very good result. It's only topped by the recent Sony Venice 2 full frame cinema camera. And here we got less than three milliseconds oh. in full frame mode. So why do you think is there such a small difference between the open gate 3x2 and the 16x9 in 120 frames per second. Yeah, because typically you would expect uh, that with the less image height of open gate compared to 16x9, you should get a lower rolling shutter. But in 4K, it switches also the sensor readout mode. It crops a little bit into the image. And obviously then the readout modes are rather similar. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. But let's move on to the dynamic range results, actually, the, yes. the core of our core. tests. Yes. Actually, I was quite worried initially because uh, when Ari said that it has even better highlight retentions, like one or one and a half stops more in the highlights, uh, I knew already from the Alexa Mini LF, from past Ari cameras, that we had to open the iris up to F2, F2.8, to get the first patch of the Xyla 21 chart to clip. And that's a requirement, otherwise you cannot correctly calculate the dynamic range with Imatest later. And when I heard that, we said, okay, we have to use a faster lens. So we took the 50 millimeter f1.2 and lucky us with f1.2, we managed to clip the first patch of the Xyla 21 chart. And then quite amazingly, actually, if the next thing we always look at is the waveform. And in the waveform plot, we look at how many stops can we still identify above the noise floor. And when you count it down, you get to 16 stops above the noise floor. Oh, wow. And then within the noise floor, you see a 17th, an 18th, and even a faint 19th stop. But what is, like, when you see, you see that in the noise floor, does that mean that with noise reduction in post, I could yes. make them usable? Yes. 
And that's something we will see later in the latitude results because this 17th stop that sits already within the noise floor, uh, are, what you can see later is that you can use that stop. Okay. You can sort of excavate it from the noise floor. So if you compare this to the results from the mini LF, which so far yeah. was the best result right. we had, right. how does it compare? Uh, basically, from the waveform alone, you can say it's got about two stops more than the Alexa Mini LF, two full stops more. Wow. And what it also shows is that actually our testing methodology and our testing equipment using this Xyla 21 chart, which is back there, yeah, is already getting to the limits because you have to clip the first patch, then you can see 19 stops, that makes 20, and then there's just one left in the shadows that Imatest couldn't identify. So if a new Ari camera somewhere in the future or any other manufacturer will come with a new camera uh, that shows more stops than that, we have to look into a new testing methodology. New chart and new software? Or? New chart, new software, new everything. <laughs> okay, well, please don't make better cameras anymore. No, I mean, it will happen. Yeah. It will happen. Uh, yeah, interesting. So that's amazing. And the next thing we do then, we take this file from the Xyla 21 chart and then load it into Imatest. And there, the Imatest software basically mathematically calculates the signal-to-noise ratios, uh, various values for that. And we typically look at the signal-to-noise ratio of 1. That means that's the first stop where the signal value is equal to the noise value, so it sits within the noise floor. And we look at one stop above, uh, that's the signal-to-noise ratio of 2. And here, the Alexa 35 has 15.1 stops at a signal-to-noise ratio of 2. And it's got 16.3 stops at a signal-to-noise ratio of 1. Well, usually, I mean, the good results we had, sometimes anything, I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but anything ar above 12 yes. stops is is very at a signal-to-noise ratio of 2 is yes. already very good. Yes. What's the native ISO, actually? It's still 800, right? Uh, the interesting thing is there's almost no su such thing as a native ISO here, and that's why I did a series of tests. I looked at exposure index 400, 800, 1600, and 3200 uh, to see, for instance, if IMA test would show any difference. And basically what happens is what you do with those different exposure values, the clipping point always stays the same, no matter which exposure index, only the whole waveform moves up the okay. signal values. And then I ran it through Imatest and I'm getting the same results for signal to noise ratio of 2 and the same for signal to noise ratio of 1 for the various exposure indices. The good news for that is you can now shoot between 400 and 3200. It doesn't make any difference in the dynamic range. It just changes how the stops are distributed above middle gray and below middle gray. And what that means is, for instance, we will see that later in the latitude test, we shot in Ari Raw uh, at exposure index 800. And then when we go get to the lower stops, just in post, you push the signal up by going to higher exposure index values, like 3200, which means it helps to pull up those lower stops and still get a meaningful signal value difference or code value difference between the stops. Okay, wow. We talked a lot about latitude. Let's move on to the latitude section, right? Yes. So here was another problem. What was the problem? Again, I, my, my forehead had your the wrong forehead. color. Your forehead has a problem. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it not only has the wrong color, it also, we couldn't get it to clip. That's what I mean. Yes. We I, couldn't get it to clip. I'm, I was already too suntanned, I guess. I don't know. No, I think it's <clears> not the color of your skin. It was basically the studio lighting. And what we did is basically, uh, we changed the bulb of our studio light and we used the bulb which is two and a half times stronger in order to get the red channel of your forehead close to clipping, not at clipping, but close to clipping. But we have to say here that we always use them at the same position. We use the same modifier, so with the same exact modifier uh, in front of that COB LED light. Correct. It's just a stronger source because Correct. otherwise we would not have been able to expose it where it, we needed it to be exposed. So even with that increased lighting and this stronger bulb, we couldn't get the red channel on your forehead close to clipping. And looking at the shots in, in the aftermath, I could see that there's about one stop still available in the highlights. And it means we were able to push the camera to 12 stops of latitude. The highest scoring camera so far was the Alexa Mini LF. 
this had 10 stops of latitude. This camera 12. That's crazy. So the latitude actually now studio scene is what other cameras have in IMA test on the waveform dynamic range. And just to add in here, and that's I think important to mention, we're talking about single exposures. We're not talking about any HDR mode, which is built into a camera, which might work with multiple exposures, combining them into one image, because of course that gives you a better dynamic, dynamic range, but it's not real because it's not a single exposure. We talked about this topic in our recent video uh, with Gerald Andan, where we talked about our different methodologies of testing and why we do things, how we do them. Um, very, very interesting in case you missed that. It's quite a long video, but you can find the link above here or below actually. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But yeah, so we are talking about a single exposure in, in Correct. one moment in time. Correct. Mm -hmm. which really shows you the quality of a sensor because yes. that's what it just captures at one moment in time. Exactly. Yeah, we've talked a lot about the latitude results now, but we also want to show it to you. So in this first series of tests, what you are seeing now is how we get down with the exposure stop by stop by first closing down the iris of the lens to T 8.0 and then from there on reducing the shutter angle from 360 to 180 to 90 to 45 and so on. And you see how dark it really gets in the lower stops. Why do we do this? Why do we actually do this? Uh, I think a latitude uh, gives a very good impression how this whole image processing pipeline from sensor to image processing to codec really works. Uh, and it basically shows also how usable the lower stops in the waveform that we we're talking about before, how usable those are. In practice, in practice. because it means exactly. when you're shooting <clears throat> and sometimes you're underexposing because right. you have to, for example, because it's really dark, Correct. how much can you still get out of this in post, exactly. right? Exactly. How much can you push the camera and how usable those lower stops, the darker stops really are. And I think the only way to do this is like we do it in our controlled CineD studio scene, where we have a controlled ratio of lighting to the highlights from the highlights to the shadows. Uh, yeah, and now we are going to push up or pull down these shots to a base exposure level. So we normalize all the shots to a base exposure level and here you go. That's what you see now. So initially you won't notice anything because from shot to shot the exposure stays the same, but once we get to the lower stops, to the darker stops, noise will appear in the image and at one point noise will be corrupting the image to such an extent that you can no longer talk about a usable image. And that's what the beauty of this test is. As you can see in these shots, uh, get going down to 11 stops uh, of exposure latitude, plus the one stop that we lost in the highlights because we couldn't expose it properly until the red channel starts to clip uh, on Nino's forehead, as we explained before. Uh, we are seeing at 11 stop or seven stops below base exposure, we can see that the limit is reached. You can see that the eighth stop of underexposure or 12 in total uh, is already showing a lot of blotchy patches of noise. And to me, this image is not usable anymore. But nevertheless, this is an amazing result. I mean, 12 stops of latitude. So <clears throat> in practice, that means that you, you know, I mean, like I always say, the more expensive the camera, the less good you need to be because like it's super easy you can overexpose camera, underexpose it's always yeah. possible to get something back actually with that camera it's really you're not limited in any way just make sure the highlights don't clip and then you just shoot it's as easy as it can get because you can push pull shadows in any way you like and i almost can't imagine any real world scene where you can really reach the limit of this camera unbelievable real world that's a good good word you said there as you said there Actually, when we got the camera, mm -hmm. everybody at the office here was like, ah, you know, it came at a difficult time. It's middle of the summer. A lot of people are traveling. We had a lot of projects going on at the same time. Uh, we're all over the place. Mm -hmm. I was like, actually, this camera is just standing around for two days before anybody else can use it from us. Gunther, why don't you have it and film something with it? And I think you were a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah, at the first point, it was like, oh gosh, I mean, I was coming to the... I mean, you're not a DP, right? You're... No, no I'm a hobbyist. <laughs> <laughs> hobbyist. A hobbyist at heart, hobbyist. but a passionate hobbyist. Now, and the thing is, I came to the CineD office on Friday to do the lab test 
and I left the CDD office with that baby in my trunk. I was like, oh my gosh, uh, I have now the best camera available <laughs> on the market, but I don't know what to shoot with it. But you did shoot something. You yes, found I did time. shoot something. I found time. Yeah, actually, I do what I always do. I ask my daughter uh, if she has an idea <laughs> and she wrote something together. Okay. And so we thought about it. And then, yeah, I shot some real world footage out in the forest, out in the woods. And let's just watch it before we talk about it, right? Yeah. So let's roll your little film. Mm -hmm. I'm Alma, 19 years old, living in Vienna, Austria. My friends and I are discussing climate change and global warming quite extensively, almost at every party actually. And I'm noticing different attitudes among them. They are the ones which just resignate. In their opinion, this whole climate change thing has already passed the tipping point. The milk is built, game over. But the other group feels the urge to do something. So the question is, what can you do? We can engage politically, we can employ new technologies, and we can help to create an environment where nature can heal itself. So what could really have an impact? For me, it's technology. I think that multinational companies have the power to move the needle. They can bring new technologies to the market. And that is where I feel I can contribute the most. Therefore, I'm studying environmental engineering at the Technical University in Vienna. I want to be part of creating new technologies that make a difference. And at the end, to hopefully mitigate the climate change. And then there is this third aspect, as a society, creating an environment where nature can heal itself. And this is where we are just now. This is the UNESCO Wienerwald Biosphere Reserve in Vienna, Austria. We are at the core area here. No trees are being harvested. There's no human intervention whatsoever. And guess what is happening? Nature starts to heal itself. The insects, birds and wildlife are coming back. We have to start to integrate nature again into our daily lives. A walk in the forest reminds me again and again that we are all part of a bigger picture that everything is connected and everything has an impact. I want to make a difference. Okay, great, Gunther. So nice images. Uh, it, I think it clearly shows that we can see everything. I mean, the yeah. the hard light going through the through the forest leaves, and 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 I mean, it's very hard to tell, of course, because it is graded. Of I mean, course. it is yeah. corrected. Uh, you are watching this video on an SDR screen. Unfortunately, apparently, there, I guess, there is no HDR way of you know having a YouTube video or something. Uh, so it has to be reduced in order for you to be able to sure. see that. Sure. Um, but um, there was a lot of detail in what you showed. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing, basically, because uh, typically if you shoot in a dark forest, you can either choose to get the exposure on the trees, right? And then the sun would burn holes in your footage, these bright holes, yeah? or you expose for the sky and then the forest gets very dark. But you see in those scenes, 
you can have the highlights, you can have the shadows. It's, it's you know, this feeling in Lightroom when you have a fat 14 mm. bit raw photo and you just pull down the highlights, you push up the shadows, and everything is there. And now we have the same for video, you're saying? Yes. We have the same for video, even better. I, I think this, this little baby here is better than most of the photo cameras out there in terms of dynamic range. Well, the thing is, I think, you know, people have to be aware that there are a lot of new cameras coming out all the time uh, from all manufacturers, but there is not the same amount of new sensors as there is new cameras, right? I mean, first of all, right. a lot of manufacturers use the same sensors. There's not that many sensor manufacturing camera companies. And then again, there is only every few years, there's a big jump in what the sensor yeah. technology is capable yeah. of. They make a jump at, at certain points in time. It was interesting that you mentioned that because in some of the lab tests I got a little bit frustrated because it felt for a while that every camera that I'm testing has 12 stops of dynamic range. Yeah, And, and probably said, some of them all yeah. had a similar sensor. Yes, yeah. very much true. And I think that's mainly due to, to the readout nature of sensors that in video mode for higher frame rates you could only read those sensors in 12-bit. Then Fuji came with the X-H2S that up to, I think, 30 frames per second, it can read the sensor in 14 bits. So that's a huge leap already. And now we have this little baby here. Which, wasn't, uh, wasn't it released on the same or announced on the same day with, so. the, yeah. with the Fuji? Yeah, so I think so. Interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. It's and definitely it's, not the same sensor yeah. though. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really pushing the bit depth also because Ari Raw has 13 bit on this camera now, no? <laughs> okay. which is another big leap. Interesting. There's one last thing before we wrap it up. Actually, <clears throat> with this video today, we decided to launch a new side feature on Synity, which we already teased before in the video with Gerald, the Synity databases. The Synity databases are a collection of data points about cameras and lenses. And first of all, we have a camera database that um, contains all the dynamic range uh, results and rolling shutter results we got from our lab tests over all the years. It is because of popular requests from you guys that we worked on this for a very, very, very long time. Um, and now we have this data. So now you can compare different cameras and can compare the results of those cameras. You can see clearly a ranking um, of dynamic range results. You can see a ranking of the rolling shutter results with all the cameras that we tested. But not only that, we also have the data for a lot of camera, uh, cameras, basically for all the relevant uh, video cameras that are on the market there. We have a database of recording modes. So there's a detailed database of all the recording modes available for all the cameras in this database. And this is not just taken from a spec sheet. Florian, who is the developer of this uh, database, he took a lot of time to actually look at all those cameras and check all the results and every recording mode resolution frame rate that all of those cameras offer. You can go through this and be confident that this data is accurate and it's not just taken from a spec sheet, which sometimes doesn't include all the results. The camera database allows you to compare cameras with each other with all those results. But we also have a lens database which contains hundreds and hundreds of lenses, uh, cinema lenses, anamorphic lenses, spherical lenses, zoom lenses, prime lenses, you name it, we have it. And then there is the combination of the camera database and the lens database, which is the lens coverage tool, which gives you a chance to check whether a lens covers the sensor that you chose. You can change the camera sensor that you choose, and then you can also change the lens and just see the coverage. Will there be any vignetting? Will there be any cropping? What will it look like? And that's what the lens coverage tool does. So the databases, we're very proud. They are launching today. This was a monumental effort uh, in development and it's been in development for over two years since our relaunch of the website even before that and they are available for free. Uh, the only request we have you have to sign up for an account with Synity uh, in order to be able to see them. Um, enjoy, click around and I hope that this is one step closer to making Synity the Swiss army knife for filmmakers that we always wanted to be. All right, thank you Gunther. Thanks Nino. Thanks for watching. We will definitely do this again uh, for a new camera. Let's see if the next results will be as good as this one. But I think that's a nice, it's a nice new format to actually yes. talk about those lab test results and not only have the, the write-up. Mm -hmm. So thanks for your time. 
Thanks to you. And thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned to Synity for a lot more on the Alexa 35, all other cameras and a lot of camera reviews, news, you name it. Thanks. Mm -hmm.